Hi, this is Matos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute. And this is case 45 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of ambiguous cap in a patient with a circumflex CTO in which intravascular ultrasound and other techniques were used to resolve the proximal cap ambiguity. This is the baseline angiogram. The patient has previous coronary bypass graft surgery and has a CTO in the mid-circumflex However, it is unclear where the proximal cap is because he has this first obtuse marginal branch and also has an atrial branch with unclear origin of the occlusion as well as the distal vessel. The distal um, circumflex and the large second obtuse marginal goes feeling retrograde via epicardia collaterals from the LAD which in turn feel from the internal mammary artery, which made those collaterals challenging for using for retrograde crossing given that they were small and fairly tortuous. This is the dual injection. Once again, we have uh, an ambiguous proximal cap. The occlusion is not too long, about 30 millimeters. There is a good quality distal vessel. However, there's a bifurcation close to the distal cap. And the collaterals are epicardial from the LAD, which in turn fills the lima, and therefore may not be the best for going retrograde, given that we will have to go through the lima, down the LAD, through this very tortuous epicardial collateral. So this is mainly an undergrade case. We did several projections try to resolve the ambiguity of the proximal cap, but this was fairly challenging. We advanced the guide wire into the large atrial branch, brought the intravascular ultrasound down, trying to understand where the occlusion started. And this was challenging even with intravascular ultrasound. This is the large part of the vessel. And then this seems to be close to the proximal cap. However, it is unclear the relationship of this proximal cap with the vessel proximally, especially this uh, first um, obtuse marginal branch. So we performed um, a technique called Carlino microdissection with contrast. We tried several wires. The wires could not get into the occlusion. We actually wanted to get a wire in that first obtuse marginal branch in order to protect it, but we were unable to do so. Despite spending several minutes and um, a lot of guide wires, we were unable to advance a guide wire into that first obtuse marginal branch. After we did this injection of contrast within the what we think is a subintimal plane, then during attempts actually to wire the obtuse marginal, the wire suddenly prolapsed into a plane which seemed to be moving in sync with the distal target vessel. We then advanced the microcatheter into the occlusion and then took a filter XT guide wire which was pushed to form a knuckle. And then by doing contralateral injection, we now see very nicely that the knuckle is moving in sync with the distal vessel. This is what we call the dancing, which um, is a, a very good sign because that means what we're in the same planes. Subintimal, given the loop, but in the same planes. Therefore, the next step is to try to re-enter using the Stingray guide wire. To deliver it, we exchange for a stiffer Miracle 12 guide wire that provides a little better support. And then we were able to deliver without much difficulty the Stingray balloon and we actually stopped it immediately proximal to the bifurcation given that both branches of that large second OM appear to be fairly large. We then did the double blind stick and swap technique in which we perform puncture on both sides of the balloon. This is the wire, this is the Stingray wire being advanced proximal to the proximal marker. So sticking up and then sticking down which it, with the wire advancing between the proximal and the distal marker. So now we created an exit point both uh, in one direction and the other direction. And then we took a Pilot 200 guide wire, which it turns out it advanced proximal to the proximal marker. And by doing contralateral injection, we do see that the Pilot 200 had actually entered the distal true lumen. Also, the re-entry point was proximal to the bifurcation, which is excellent because that will allow us to maintain patency of both branches after we place the stand. So the first thing is to switch for a workhorse wire. So the Stingray and the Pilot 200 wires were removed. 
and a workhorse Sion Blue Y was advanced into the superior branch of the second obtuse marginal. And then after placing stents, essentially from the bifurcation all the way to the ostium of the circumflex, we were able to restore flow into the second obtuse marginal branch. Unfortunately, the first obtuse marginal branch could not be recanalized, and given the time of crossing was um, after several minutes of crossing attempts, we did not want to attempt again to advance guide wire. But everything was achieved uh, within um, uh, a little less than 4 gray, 49 minutes of fluoroscopy time, and uh, 270 ml of contrast. So this case illustrates several ways to resolve proximal cap ambiguity. In this particular case, in geography was not helpful given the multiple branches originating at the proximal cap. We did not have a CT angiogram. We did do IVOS that showed the vicinity of the vessel, however, it was hard to advance wires in that area, and we eventually had to employ the so-called move the cap techniques. We used several guide wires, including Pilot 200 and Gaia, to create a, a little dissection plane. We also used the Carlino technique, which is contrast injection, and we also at some point did uh, some balloon inflation more proximal, more so to, uh, to have a little more flow into the vessel, but that might have helped into allowing us to advance a wire into the subintimal plane. And after doing that, we were able to cross the lesion subintimally, re-enter immediately proximal to the bifurcation, and obtain a nice final geographic result. Thank you.